Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog, uh, more like the anti-Venom Vlog this week. And we are diving back into the comic books. Again, movie news is kind of slow right now, and we talked about that a couple episodes ago. So uh, I want to dive more into the comics. I want to catch up on some of the anti-Venom stories and also the Agent Venom stories. And we already talked about Flash Thompson and his first five issues as anti-Venom, or as Agent Venom, I should say. Um, and, you know, we talked about that a couple episodes ago. And then last episode is when we talked about anti-Venom and Eddie Brock and him going after Mr. Negative and learning that Mr. Negative is actually Martin Lee. So this storyline is is not really tied into that yet. There is a sequel to that storyline coming up here soon called The Return of Anti-Venom. But before we get there, we're going to talk about this mini series that came out uh, that was called like The Amazing Spider-Man Presents Anti-Venom New Ways to Live because obviously New Ways to Die was the storyline that introduced, you know, the character of Anti-Venom and Eddie becoming him. But this one is uh, now him out on the road. It's a three-issue story and it's him fighting the the Mexican drug cartel and uh, it gets Jenna involved, obviously Punisher's there too. Um and uh, and it's it's great. So it's like a buddy cop almost uh, with a uh, Punisher. There is a Punisher's like kind of right hand person Henry who's like his weapons guy and, and truck driver uh, so he's in the story too uh, but it kind of reminded me of Funeral Pyre, that really great story that we talked about recently that Tom Lyle drew, where it was Venom and Eddie, you know, teaming up with uh, Punisher in San Francisco against a new villain named Pyre. And so this one is really, really awesome. It's written by Zeb Wells, who I'm a huge fan of, and I do defend. I know a lot of people, are, you know, aren't a big fan of his dark origin story. I don't love it, but I do feel there's a lot of good, interesting things in that storyline, especially with Eddie Brock's past. So it was cool to see him kind of come in and do this storyline. And then also Chad Harden and Paolo Segura were the two artists on this miniseries too. And the art in this is fantastic. Um, it's a three issue story. You can find it in a trade paperback. I think you can get it in print still maybe, uh, but it's also on Comixology for sure. And it's pretty cheap on Comixology. And uh, it, it's so it kind of focuses on Eddie at the start of the story. It's, it's him as Anti-Venom finding Jenna again. She uh, gets mixed up with the wrong crowd. Some of the old guys that used to sell her drugs find her on the streets and pull her into an alley and Eddie comes in and saves her and you know beats the crap out of the guys and then he starts to see that her connection in this now is getting bigger and then she gets uh, kind of sucked back into the world of drugs after trying to cure herself. She's struggling really hard with being uh, you know sober and even though he completely cleaned her of her poison in her body but she still has the addiction and so she's struggling with it and so it was it was great to see more of Jenna in here and like I said I think they plan for her to at least be more of a recurring character although I think this might be the last storyline we see her in unfortunately because I thought hey that's a great character for someone like Eddie someone who has a different kind of addiction than Eddie uh, because Eddie is kind of codependent on the symbiote and now with this new anti-venom power he's kind of codependent and what I like is that it's Eddie and he doesn't have a voice in his head you know like a symbiote talking to him it's just Eddie the whole time and that's interesting because it gets you more into the headspace of Eddie Brock and you kind of get to learn more about him as a character um, and and he even though he doesn't have another voice in his head you can still he's still co codependent on having an ability and Jenna has a codependency with you know a heroin so it's uh it's great it's a neat parallel I don't know I, I liked it I thought it was a Jenna was a neat character I thought and I thought they could have done a lot more with her and hopefully one day someone will um, for sure I know if I if so, I know if I ever got to write a, a Venom story, I would try to bring a character like her back in, um, and and some of the other people from Eddie's past as well. So uh, so this storyline, really really solid uh, writing, great artwork. I really like the artwork in this one, and uh, it has Venom, or anti Venom, I guess, uh, you know, rescuing her again, and then she gets again pulled into this world uh the guy who is selling her drugs who you know she got mixed up with some mr negative guys before but now she's getting mixed up with this mexican drug cartel that has guys up in new york and things like that and uh and so the guy who runs the cartel or this part of the cartel is called the quintas as his name and he's like this really nasty dude he's got like, but he's got like these mutton chop they kind of like wolverine you know chops um and uh and he's got like spiky black hair and he's big he's like a ripped dude and he's got arsenal out the crap, you know, like he's got a like a little fortress with uh, weapons galore. And uh, and so he's a pretty formidable foe. But while Venom or Anti-Venom is trying to help Jenna and get her back on her feet and cure her once again, because she gets in with these guys and they grab her and they force her down and they drug her and they force her to take drugs. And Eddie shows up just in time before they could, you know, luckily do anything worse. And they, he takes them down. He kills all the guys. And one of the guys even has a Venom tattoo on his arm. So like, you know, old school Venom, like with the tongue out and everything. And, you know, Anti-Venom sees this or Eddie sees this and he's like, 
I can't escape my past, it seems like, you know, like I'm still doing horrible things. I, I mutilated these guys. I killed them. He goes, but they're bad guys. And he goes, so I'm, I'm trying to not repeat the sins of my past or the way I was, try to be a better person. He goes, but, you know, these guys make it so hard because of the horrible things they do. And so, but it was cool seeing him looking at his hands and in between his hands and the artwork, there was this guy's arm with the venom tattoo. And I was like, wow, great framing. Great. You know, I don't know if Zeb wrote that in the script or the artist came up with that. But it's man, it was such a good idea. It's so it's so visually cool looking, and I like the the parallels there of his like white anti venom hands, and then seeing the the venom head in between on a tattoo, I thought was really good. So as Eddie has just helped Jenna again, the Punisher is now on the trail of this Quintus guy, and he's coming into town and you know following breadcrumbs to lead him to his organization. So of course Punisher, that's what he does. He tracks down mob bosses and cartel members, and he just kills them all, right? So as he's going through New York City, he of course comes across. Uh, Eddie Brock as anti-venom and he sees him and there's this great moment at the end of the first issue where Eddie is like uh, all right and he turns you know into anti-venom and he's like let's go do this and then Punisher just pulls up a shotgun puts it right to the back of Eddie's head and fires the gun and that's where the first issue ends uh, so the best thing about this is that it's this three issue buddy cop storyline but they're not buddies at all Eddie really, he remembers, like, hey, we teamed up before, you know, is, is this going to be fun? And, you know, he's kind of like, you know, we, we're kind of on the same wavelength. Like, we want to take down bad guys. And and uh, and Punisher's like, yeah, I'm not teaming up with you. You're a freaking monster. And he goes, and I don't care that you're, you know, Eddie Brock and that you're reformed or whatever. He's like, I don't care who you are. He's like, uh, I'm going to kill you. And I'm, every chance I get to kill you, I'm going to take that chance. So when he shoots him in the head, you know, Venom turns, Anti-Venom turns around. He's like, are you kidding me? Like, so the next issue starts off. And so they get into a little tussle and, and, uh, you know, Punisher kind of gets put in his place a little bit, but he's still ready to like fight. And he's like, he's like, come on, like, let's keep going. And he's like, look, there's a young girl, you know, Jenna, she's been kidnapped now uh, because of us fighting. You know, the cartel got away with her and now they're, you know, they sent like him a video and they're like, look, here she is. And it's like her, uh, you know, Jenna being drugged up again. He's like, I'm going to pump her full of every drug I have and I'm going to do all these terrible things to her. And Eddie's like, we got to go save her. And he goes, you know, this is the guy you're after. I'll help you take him down. We can work as partners. Let's go do this. And uh, and so Punisher's like, all right, Henry, you know, pull the truck around. So Henry, his partner, you know, who's like kind of runs his gear and stuff and helps him out. He's like, all right, let's let's go and, and work with him for now and we'll see what happens. He goes, but, you know, don't turn your back on me, you know, Agent Venom or Anti-Venom. He goes, uh, don't turn your back on me because I'm definitely going to take you down. And so, uh, so you know, Anti-Venom's like, fine. All right, Eddie's like, I got it, man. So the second issue is kind of them in the van taking a trip to this location to go take down the bad guy. And there's this great moment where they're like, uh, they came up with fake IDs and they're, you know, uh, Eddie like turns back into Eddie, but you know, and he's kind of standing there uh, sitting in the passenger seat and, and Henry's between him and uh, Frank and Frank's in the driver's seat. And he gives his his fake ID to the, the woman at the gate. And she's like, all right, let me run your, you know, thing and make sure you guys are here for, you know, the prop, like which, you know, you're here for right reasons or whatever. You're, you are who you say you are. So she grabs his identification and she turns and she starts putting it in. And then it is this great six panel uh, layout, which is so amazing, where right as she turns her head, Frank pulls out a knife and goes like this to stab it right into Eddie's chest. And luckily the, sim, you know, the, the anti-symbiote, whatever it is, comes alive and grabs the knife and stops it from going into Eddie's heart. And he's like, are you crazy? And then, uh, you know, Frank lets go of the knife and he's just like, he's like, Ugh. he goes, I told you. He goes, I goes, I'm going to try to kill you at every turn. And Henry, by the way, is just like in the middle going, please don't fight. Please don't fight. <laughs> and meanwhile, this lady's checking his ID and he's, he was full on going to stab Eddie. I mean, it was, oh, it was so good. I mean, that moment right there made me laugh so hard. I thought it was really well done, very well executed drawing-wise. It hit the right comedic beats to make it funny. And uh, and Zeb, you know, wrote the, the greatest dialogue in there for that scene. And it made me laugh so much. But I love how Zeb constantly kept that tension between Eddie and Frank through the whole book. He just is like, look, Frank hates Eddie Brock. So they're not buddies. They're not here on a, on a mission together, even though Eddie thinks they are. Frank does not see it that way. And Frank's going to come at him with everything he can. And, uh, and so in the third issue, when they finally get to the drug cartel place and they, uh, you know, go up against the Quintas and all of his men, of course, they make short work of it. Eddie's able to go through. Uh, I think Frank, at one point when they're fighting each other, use a flamethrower on Eddie. And Eddie's like, yeah, fire doesn't work on me anymore, dude. And he's like, so, uh, so you know, so knock it off. Stop trying to kill me. And uh, but then, you know, Eddie does wound Frank really badly and he cuts him. And uh, and so he gets so he's like bleeding heavily. And so so Punisher decides to sit back and pull out a sniper rifle. And he's like, all right, I'll let a Agent Venom or Anti Venom. I always mix the two up. Uh, I you know a a Venom and a Venom. So yeah, the initial. So um anyway, Anti Venom. He's running into the place try to save Jenna. 
He does. He's able to save her. Once again, curing her of all the drugs that, uh, that uh, you know, that the Quintas put in her, which is just crazy. I mean, she's still kind of out of it uh, by the end of the issue. But uh, this poor girl has been like injected, has injected herself and been injected with so many drugs in just like the two storylines we got of her. And it's just it's so heartbreaking, um, the stuff she's gone through. That's why I would like to see more of a story with her where maybe she's kind of reclaiming her life in some way or doing something positive out there, you know, kind of bounce back. I'd love to see more of that, uh, you know, later on with her. Uh, but so, you know, Eddie is uh, fighting the Quintas, takes him down, kills him. And meanwhile, you know, Frank is back and he's sniping, you know, sniper killing um, all the men who are like running in and, you know, they're trying to, to hurt everybody. And he's like, well, look, whether I hate Eddie or not, there's still an innocent girl here. Let's try to save her. Um, although he does call her a junkie and Eddie gets pissed off and, and he's like, look, she can be saved. Like, you know, like have a little bit of faith in some people, even if you think they're broken, like try to have some faith in them. And, uh, and so Eddie does and he saves her and he, he kills the King Tess at the end and he comes back and, uh, as he's like gets out of the the you know the building or whatever that where the, the Quintas was like his fortress, uh, it's burning down and everything like that in the background. And Eddie's holding you know onto Jenna and he's like trying to he's curing her slowly. And she's like, oh thanks Eddie, like I'm sorry I, I got into this. And he's like, it's okay, it's not your fault, you know. And I'm glad I'm able to save you. And then he like looks over his shoulder and he sees and you see uh, you know Frank Castle looking down the barrel of the sniper rifle and uh, and he has him right in his crosshairs and just Eddie's face, no symbiote. And, uh, and Eddie looks at him and he's like getting ready for the shot. And he's like, closes his eyes. And then he opens his eyes and he goes, you can't do it, can you, Frank? He's like, because me and you are heroes. Uh, he's like, I'm a hero just like you. And then Frank is up there with his uh, partner, Henry. And he has the sniper and he, and he like just puts the gun down. And he goes, Henry, let's get out of here. And he goes, uh, and he goes, wait, aren't you going to kill him? And he goes, uh, he goes, I'm bleeding too much. And he goes, but it's, it's Eddie Brock anti-venom. Like he's, he's a monster. You said it so yourself. And you, you called her a junkie. Like, what made you change? And he goes, he looks at Henry and he puts the gun in his, uh, in his chest. And he goes, you didn't, he's like, you didn't reload it. <laughs> so you, even still at the end, Eddie thinks that, you know, Frank let him go out of some kind of kindness and Frank full on pulled the trigger. And I love that they didn't do like a click, you know, sound effect or nothing. They just showed Punisher, put the gun down and be like, and he and he puts the gun or the rifle back into Henry's chest, and he's like, "You didn't you didn't reload the freaking gun after I took out you know um, some of those uh, drug because I guess he was like taking people down and then passing a clip and then getting another clip and putting it in and then so he passed a clip and I guess Henry never gave him another one because all the other all the bad guys were down so when he pulled the trigger there was no bullets in it and I was like that's so great Frank still to the end did doesn't care about Eddie and he still wanted to kill him so yeah best best buddy kind reminded me of like Tango and Cash. A little bit uh, like in the beginning when they really start hating each other by the end i think they become really solid teammates obviously but in the beginning they really you know hate each other and they go at each other and stuff so i was like this is so great like i i love that buddy cop anti buddy cop story it's uh it's really awesome so hopefully frank shows up at a in a venom book at some point they don't really tell a lot of street level frank you know venom stories anymore so maybe Jenna and, and Frank aren't really able to get in there, but uh, I would love some. I mean, make some. There's a Venom movie coming out, Marvel. Make some miniseries. Like get some other writers out there to do like you know three issue miniseries that you know to just have more Venom content for when the movie comes out. Uh, you know, so um, yeah, I would love to see some street level stuff like that and characters like Jenna and Frank come back in. So uh, yeah, this was awesome. I, I mean, I I can't stop raving about the story. I love Zeb Wells. I love the art in this story a lot. Uh, by Paulo Segura and Chad Hardwin, or Harden, and uh, it's, I mean, if you haven't read this and you're an Eddie Brock fan, you got to read the, the anti-venom stuff. It's so fun. Uh, seeing Eddie, it, they're really diving into him as a character, but they're like, it, it feels like a very much of a throwback to the 90s stories where it's kind of goofy fun, um, which the movie kind of captures a little bit of with uh, Tom Hardy's performance. He tries to capture that side of Eddie and did a really great job at it as far as I'm concerned. And so seeing that in this and seeing him really believing that Frank has a good side to him uh, and that his Frank has a sympathetic side. And then Frank, every step of the way, proving that he doesn't was just awesome. It reminded me of like the, the Frank stuff that, um, that Garth Ennis did and stuff like that. And I was like, this is, it's great. It's classic Frank Castle, but like, but not cl classic, like old school. Although the older ones, like the nom and, and uh, war journal stuff, like when I was a kid, Frank was very much like that. If, he, if Wolverine got in his way, he would, sh you know, shoot Wolverine in the face. Um, even though it didn't do much, it just pissed Wolverine off. But he would, he would go toe to toe Wolverine because Punisher didn't care. I think Punisher at one point in the 90s assassinated Nick Fury. Uh, you know, I think it was like a, turned out to be a life model decoy or something, but still he worked his way all the way up and fought through agents and got right up to Nick Fury to kill him. So it was like, yeah, you know, 
Frank Castle's awesome, man. So uh, so this story was awesome. Go pick it up. It's called Amazing Spider-Man Presents Anti-Venom, or I think if you just look up the trade paperback, it's called Anti-Venom New Ways to Live. And I highly recommend it, as you could tell, because I had a smile on my face through this whole discussion video. So uh, if you've read it yourself, let me know what you think down below. Uh, if you haven't, please go check it out and then come back here and let me know what you think down below. And we'll continue our conversation, as always, down there. Uh, we do have one more story coming up called Return of the Anti-Venom. Um, we'll probably talk about that next. I don't know if I'll record that today now that I've gotten through a few of these and they ran a little longer than I thought. I may save that one um, and you know do it in a couple days from now. Uh, but you'll probably definitely get it before I hit the road for, for Florida. And then the last one you'll get a video on is the Revengers storyline, which is uh, two Avengers annuals that came out back to back, part one and part two where Wonder Man kind of creates his own team uh, called the Revengers, and they go after the Avengers because uh, Wonder Man is, is as a former teammate of theirs, is sick of seeing the, the horrible things that they let bad guys get away with by just you know arresting bad guys. And they're like, you guys are part of the problems. All the big problems that happened in the world in the past few years have been Wanda Maximoff or Scarlet Witch you know, with House of M, um, the Age of Ultron stuff that you, got, you guys created Ultron. Um, he's like, you guys bring all the bad things, civil war, everything's kind of your fault. And so I'm going to create a team to come in and, you know, humble you guys basically and, and try to get you guys to stop doing what you're doing. And that storyline's coming up and, and anti-venom plays a small part in that one. So we'll get there too. We'll get both those videos up sometime th this week with you guys, but I'm going to definitely take a break now. I've, I've, uh, yeah, these ran a little bit longer and my energy level is already declining. So, um, yeah, I got to take, take some rest now. So I'll record those in a day or two and I'll get those up to you guys before I leave town for sure. Uh, thanks so much for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you on the future. Peace.